One of the best ways to maximize your content is to capture your everyday business as usual events or activities. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my three top favorite ways to do this and show you how you can make a ton of different content out of one event, like the content pieces you see here. We made this content all from behind the scenes style content from one workshop event that we held with our alumni students inside of our program, the Podcast Edit Lab. This video is really going to level up your content what do you say we get right to it? Hey, you've arrived at the Pod Sound School where we are obsessed with podcasting and content creation and leveling up your content to make more money and better content. So make sure that you subscribe here to the channel and share the channel with fellow creators. So let's start with number one on the list, and this is camera slider behind the scenes shots. These shots are so much fun, and while it does take a camera slider track, let me show you how cool it is to use, and it's actually pretty affordable if you wanna add a little movement to your shots. This is also something that you can DIY even if you are shooting alone. So I thought it'd be really cool before I break this down to show you how we just used this last night for a workshop we did inside of our podcast edit lab program for our alumni. Part of maintaining their certification and staying at the cutting edge and being the best editors in the industry means quarterly workshop with really fun guest editors. And last night we had a killer editor, Augustine, give a presentation in Premiere to our Edit Lab alumni. He got into all sorts of advanced video editing, but we followed our own advice and before we hopped into the workshop, before we hopped into the presentation, we asked ourselves, how can we get the most out of our efforts here and repurpose this into content for social media, for our website, and B-roll for our future YouTube videos. So here is a great video maker camera slider. Now it doesn't come with the stands. These are just standard light stands that you would use for lights. And that way you can actually screw them into this track to get the track up here at a good height. So you want to get a nice level with the track. The track also comes with this fluid camera head on the top that allows you to attach your camera. Here is where you could also attach a iPhone clip. Notice here on each side of the track, we have a knob that we can turn. And when we turn this knob, it actually moves this pole that is in the middle of the track. And that pole will rotate and twirl this wheel here, which will actually spin the camera in one direction or the other as it slides. I can illustrate that here by just moving the pole. See, as the pole moves to the bottom or the top, the camera is also sliding. So as we are getting our shot on one side of the track, we can move which way the camera is gonna point. This allows us to have the camera really stretch out wide and get a very panoramic shot, or we can even center the camera on an item maybe in the middle that we're focusing on. And then as the camera slides, it sort of maintains focus on something in the middle. So a lot of control here in how we can get this camera to move. So let me show you how I typically set this bad guy up. So what I'm looking for here is Veronica sitting in this chair. She's going to be talking with and engaging with the workshop, our alumni in the workshop. So I'd like to get her and also the faces of the virtual classroom participants. As we're looking at that, it'd be really cool if the camera could kind of slide and move in fun ways. And then we can either slow that down or speed it up and create some cool time-lapse footage. So the first thing I do is get the camera slider body or central piece here actually to the center of the track. And that's where I kind of calibrate my basic shot. To do that, you come over here to the computer and using these buttons here is how you're going to adjust this track and get it moving. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move it to the middle. I'll increase the speed to 100% so that it moves more quickly for me. Once it's in the middle, I will press the center button here, which stops it. Now that we're in the middle, this is where I would adjust the shot and get it just like I want it. And I would do that by adjusting the fluid head here, much like you would a tripod. This is actually looking really good. So now what I need to do is I need to tell the great video maker track where I want the start point and the end point of my track movement to begin. So I'm first going to bring the camera all the way to the beginning and press stop right there, right at the edge. And then here, if you hold down this button in the middle, 
it will actually go into the previous menu. And if you keep holding it down, you'll get into the very first menu, and that's this menu here, the setting menu. And here we can choose video shot, time lapse, or setting. If I scroll down to setting, I can say set start. And here at set start, I will just press the enter button. So now that it's here at the start, that is the numerical value or code for what the great video maker considers this position. So I can just press the center button until all of the lights go away and then hold and that kind of enters this as the start point. Now I'll go down to set end and press the center button again. And now I'll press the arrow to get it moving all the way over here to the left side. It's getting close, getting close, and I'll stop it. Now that I've stopped it on that side of the track, I can come back over here. Here's the numerical value for the end point, so I'll just press the center button again. And now I can hold down this center button to go back to the previous menu. And now that the start and end are set, I can hold it down again to go to the previous menu or the first menu, which is this, and I'm all ready to go. So now what I need to do is also check and calibrate the camera at this point at each end. And this is where we can really take advantage of the spinning movement that this track offers. So here at the left side, you can choose how far do I want the camera to spin? Where do I want the camera to move when it gets over on this side? Maybe when it's on this side, I want the camera to move to actually see our PSS logo like that. So I can then tighten this and as the camera moves towards this side, it's also going to move pointing more to the left. So now over here again, I'm gonna go into video shot this time, and I'm gonna choose auto mode and auto loop. And now you can just press either one of these arrows and it kind of starts the camera moving. And when it gets to one side, it'll stop and turn around and go to the other side again. So I'm gonna bring this back over to the right side when it gets to the right side, I'll press the center button again to stop it. There we go. And now that it's on the right side, I have the same opportunity to mess with this dial here and move the bar around and decide where I want the camera to spin, what I want the camera to be looking at when it reaches the right side. I'll kind of center it more on Veronica where she will be sitting and we'll center it like that. And I'm just really pushing up or pulling back on the knob when it's loose. And then when I find the spot that I like, I tighten the knob. I think something like that would be great. So now we can watch our movement that the camera does. So in this setup here, you can see how the camera is really gonna get a very panoramic field of view because it angles really far out to the left side when it gets there. The other way that you can do this, and that is to have sort of a central focus. And as the camera turns to the left, it continues to focus on more of a central spot and instead rotates inward. The angle that it rotates inward is very impressive. And finally, the other cool feature to point out about this is the speed. Here, this speed that you're seeing now is the fastest speed. This is 100%, but you could go all the way down to 0%, which not only makes this very slow, but also makes it very quiet if you need it to be very quiet for shooting. But 1%, does it go to 0? No, it will go all the way down to 1%. 1% is very slow, and this is an ideal speed for time-lapse photography. You can see here at 1%, it's moving very slowly. So for the shot of Veronica, I set this to about 50%, so it moves relatively slow. And you be the judge of the results. Using this footage of Veronica and the students with the track dolly, I will quickly create B-roll that we can use for our YouTube videos, we can incorporate with our next hack into an Instagram Reel, and also that we can use for website banner images, and the list goes on. And it's time to move on to number two, and a top favorite of ours, we do this all the time here at Pod Sound School, and that is Photoshoot GIF animations. I love screenshots, and I think that it should be a mandate to always be at the armed and ready to take screenshots. 
Apple computers have a really cool quick key for this. They actually have two quick keys. The first one is Shift Command 3, and that will take an instant screenshot of your entire screen and of whatever screen is attached to your computer as well. And then there's Shift Command 4, which is also really cool. It gives you this little plus icon that allows you to create a marquee and select a certain area that you wanna take a screenshot of. Both of these are so useful when it comes to creating quick content that you can upload to Canva and instantly edit yourself or that you can share with your post-production team. Our favorite use case for this at the Pod Sound School is to make GIFs of our workshops, but also we like to do this at the beginning of our podcast episodes with virtual guests as an icebreaker. We do a little photo shoot with our guests. It's a fun way to kind of loosen the mood and get a little silly at first, but also capture some footage that our editors can look at and extract photos from that can wind up being the cover for our YouTube thumbnail or the individual episode artwork, as well as fun GIFs or animated videos of our guests and even fun GIFs or animated videos of us if our editor wants to create some animations for our YouTube videos. So let's hop into Canva and I'll show you how easy it is to create your own GIF and how I created this one of the workshop that we hosted last. Night. Oh, and also on the topic of the workshop of amazing alumni editors, have you thought about becoming a creative professional editing video and podcast for a living? We have a 12 week program called Podcast Edit Lab. You can go to podcastingsmart.com slash edit lab to find out all the details. So first, let me show you how I made this GIF animation for a community post on YouTube. We'll start over by clicking on the grid view here in Canva and highlighting all of these pictures here and we'll delete them and start over with this picture. So if you have multiple poses of your subject because you've done a photo shoot, then you can build a single graphic like this one of the main photo that you wanna use. And then we can click on the down arrow here to actually hide pages and go back into this view here. And from here, I'm going to duplicate the page by clicking on this icon. Now, if I choose a new pose, click and drag it to go in its place. Canva will intelligently use the same background remover and the same glow effect that I used on my image. I can kind of resize it and make it look the way I want and just continue the process, duplicating the page and adding more poses. Once I have a series of pictures that I'm happy with, I will want to ensure that the timing of these pages is set the way I want it to for my GIF animation. So once again, I'll click on show pages and then I can click on duration down here and that will make this edit timing pop up. And I do have the timing set to 0.5 seconds, but Canva actually defaults at having the image time be five seconds and you can say apply to all pages. So here you would actually want to change this to 0.5 and apply to all pages. And now when you're ready, you can click on share, download, and from file type in the drop down menu, we will choose GIF. And here you can usually get away with making the GIF pretty big if you only have four or five pictures and we'll download it. The process is really the same for anything you wanna create a GIF from. If you have a photo shoot type thing, or you could think of stop motion style photography, so in the case of our workshop here, we asked all of our alumni to make a series of poses. And I just chose four of my favorite poses and then repeated them. Now, if we go to the grid view, you will notice that I repeated them many times and there's actually 32 of them here. This is because I want to actually have this be a high quality MP4 video that I can use for Instagram reels or that I could use as maybe edit lab promotional material for our website. But the GIF of this would also go really great in emails and lots of other places. So when I'm making a GIF, I would again want to make sure that I only have the four main pictures and simply make a GIF of these four pictures because the GIF will repeat into infinity. So have fun and experiment with some GIFs or GIFs or whatever you want to call them. And the third on our list, and this one's really simple, and that is iPhone time-lapse shots. My all-time favorite use of the iPhone is the time-lapse. I think it's perfect for getting behind the scenes footage of our work every day. And these time-lapse clips work perfect for social media. And they're so easy if we're busy and maybe we want extra content in addition to what our editor is giving us. 
And they perform really well on social media, just little time-lapse videos of you doing your thing, your day-to-day -day work, or a Zoom meeting that you're in, or a project that you're working on that's specific to your industry and relevant to your people. And then all you have to do is post that little time-lapse video and add some captions or stickers or any of the fun bells and whistles on each vertical video platform, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts. And if you wanna get really fancy, yes, you can use your iPhone with the great video maker camera slider track that we illustrated at the first of the video. On the topic of smartphone and vertical videos, a really fun app that you ought to try out is CapCut. They have a lot of incredible templates and text animations and captions. You can just make videos, share them with your Google Drive, download them to your computer, throw them into CapCut, and there's templates that are ready to go that are perfect for vertical format and social media sharing, where you can get those captions in the text safe area, perfect for Instagram Reels, and perfect for TikTok and YouTube Shorts. And there you have it, I know, pretty cool stuff. Give me a thumbs up if you found value in this and make sure to share it with another content creator. Also, remember, if you would like to become a professional video and podcast editor, check out our podcast edit lab at podcastingsmart.com slash edit lab. And let's not stop with these three amazing hacks. Let's get even more advanced with our editing and content creation hacks. In this video right here, I take you behind the scenes with me as I create a YouTube podcast video intro for a client. I use Envato and After Effects and Adobe Premiere. You're not gonna wanna miss out on this one.